Okay. Um, our speakers today, uh, let's go for a round of introductions. First, we'll have Dr. Dong Po Den. Uh, he's a geoinformation specialist, and also, also the open data consultant and project director of uh, the OCF and the Civic Sense project. Okay, uh, just hi, Dong Po. <laughs> hi. <laughs> and uh, we'll have Dr. Salah Wu, and he's the associate professor in remote sensing program, which uh, is based in the uh, Department of ICT in uh, Asia Institute of Technology, all the way from Thailand, yeah. And uh, we have the third speaker today, Dr. Roy. Uh, he's the CTO of Camille, um, a Taiwan-based co-pro that specializes in data mining, cleansing, analysis, and uh, especially uh, in cutting-edge technologies such as AI, VR, and data visualizations. And uh, our three speakers today are a bit diverse. Huh? But um, however, the three uh, honorable speakers are bounded by the OCF project that that's we call Civic Sense. And uh, in order to promote the open source hardware and the uh, usage of open data. Okay, back to the panel itself. Uh, throughout all the agendas, feel free to submit your questions using Slido. And uh, you can also collaborate on the uh, conference notes with uh, online and in-person in fellows attendees. And uh, also another message from the GovZero conference that they want me to tell you guys that the unconference of GovZero Summit is now seeking for submissions and the submissions deadline is tomorrow 10 a.m. If you wish to participate in that, you can find the info at the registration desk. And the food and drinks are not allowed in this venue, so Okay, this uh, are my housekeeping rules, uh, it's end now. So without further ado, uh, we would like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Dong Po, on the topic of digital inclusions based on civil IOTs. Okay, uh, wait a moment, it's a uh, help to uh, switch to the full screen. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I'm uh, happy to have been invited to speak uh, our, our project work. Uh, in this project, we try to uh, build up the uh, uh, relationship based on the digital uh, inclusion between uh, <coughs> IoT yeah, between the uh, NGO and, uh, and enterprise. And so uh, these are my topic. But actually, I, I want to talk the framework, uh, how, how we build up the framework and some experience. And uh, <clears throat> before of that, I try to uh, explain you guys about uh, why we have this project and uh, why we do it. And so this is the background of this project. First of all, and as the Western say, we have a civic sense project in, uh, in OCF, Open Cultural Foundation. And civic sense actually want to pr promote the uh, open hardware and software for IoT solution, and also want to utilize the IoT and, and data science in the uh, civic tech development. And also try, try to promote the Taiwanese IoT experience to oversee and fostering the, uh, the international cooperation based on the IoT uh, and, and CV tech. And this is a CV, CV sense uh, in uh, OCF. And uh, most, in, most bigger and large the, the project is actually the government based uh, the project. This is a, a CV, CVO internet, uh, CV IoT project in Taiwan. This is a government and long term project. And in this project, I actually try to uh, provide a, provide the, uh, the, uh, the CVO IoT data, also the, the build up, I uh, use the, the, the lot of sensor uh, to monitoring the environmental. 
And so they focus on the how to provide the data, how to use, how to apply the data for the digital, uh, for the data visualization, also the, the, the service, data service, and also even uh, use the AI for their, uh, their, their requirement. So uh, we have uh, 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 water, uh, air quality, and also the earthquake and disaster information in this uh, 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 project. And this is uh, the, the big project in, uh, in Taiwan. And we, since we have uh, this uh, big project, we have a lot of experience about how to apply the CVO IoT in Taiwan. So we try to promote this experience to oversee. Like in Thailand, we have a good collaboration with uh, Dr. Salawu. And, <clears throat> and so this is our project. This is a background project, sorry. And why we need the CVO IoT? The, the question is very simple. The, uh, the, the government IoT always bigger, larger, expensive, but CVO IoT focuses on the cheaper and low cost and by the price, prices uh, IoT solutions. So you can see the, the, in, in the left hand side, this is uh, all the CVO IoT sensor around the, around the, uh, the Taiwan. But if uh, the previous traditional one IoT sensor in, in, in Taiwan for in the air quality, only uh, 79, 79 uh, uh, stations for the monitoring air quality is not enough uh, for the small scale. So we, we need a CVO IoT. And in the CVO IoT, actually they have a different label. Uh, since we have a regulation label, like we say 79 stations is uh, uh, in on the right hand side. This is regular for regulation have to build up. And the, uh, for the, uh, citizen city, uh, the smart city table, we have um, the hard zone determination uh, sensor. is a low, low cost, cheaper, and also precise um, uh, sensors. And we also have uh, education for environmental education or for the personal sensor. So they have uh, different labels. And uh, you can see this is the sensor. We have uh, air quality sensor like this, and the uh, auto water quality and the mobile air quality. And also uh, this project also focus on, just I, as I mentioned, focus on the uh, use the CV tech, uh, CV tech. So we actually collaboration with the, the CV tech community, which is uh, LAS, the location aware sensing, uh, aware sensing system. Okay, this is uh, their website, and you can see the, the, the sensor. Uh, that's, uh, you have to build, uh, assemble it by yourself. To, uh, uh, this is sensor. And also, besides of the, the air, quality, air quality sensor, we have also have a water sensor. It's a water box. Uh, it can be a DO and, uh, and some uh, different uh, index for water monitoring. And, uh, for the community version, actually they have a different, uh, different uh, stage and also a different versions. Right now we actually use the maps in the, in the middle one. And so this is a, since we have a lot of the IoT sensor in Taiwan, so we can have a more precise um, air, quality sen air quality monitoring. We can know uh, how, it, how change, how, how air quality vari variation in the small scale, in the community scale. So it, so we can uh, uh, trace on where is the air pollution, uh, where is the air, air pollution uh, 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 source. So uh, this is actually uh, the work from uh, Camille, and maybe they will expand later in, in, in his talk. And so th that's why we need uh, CVO IoT. It is very important for small scale uh, 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 tracing. Okay. And back, back on our framework in the OCF, actually, which I just mentioned, we try to make the framework. This framework is, is an inclusive, inclusive business, business partnership, which means uh, we try to collaborate with uh, NGO and enterprise. And for the NGO and enterprise, actually, they have an internal change and the internal change. For the internal change, we, we say uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we can each change our, our technology uh, for the sensor. Uh, in the NGO, actually focus on the CV tech. The enterprise focus on how to make their business better. So actually, they, we can exchange our experience. So <clears throat> we have an uh, innovation combination. And second on, we can fix the uh, organization culture. 
Uh, in OCF, we actually uh, focus on the open source, open hardware, but and for enterprise, they do not. They actually focus on how to make a profit in interest. But how we can balance this, uh, this, this, this uh, uh, framework, we have the discussion. And this is uh, how to make the culture balance. So this is inner change. And for outer change, actually, we try to understand local, uh, local condition and local requirement. And, and so we can adjust our uh, sensor and, uh, and also technology to fit the local requirement. And also to support their infrastructure. So I will, I will talk about uh, Nigeria, Niger Nigeria case. This is actually we uh, uh, t try to lo understand local requirement and fit their, their requirement. They fit their, their requirement, support them there. It's an external, uh, uh, external uh, change. So first on, we have to um, uh, think of the internal and external different. And then we try to make the uh, exclusive uh, business partnership. Uh, this, is, this, this term is not my, uh, crea created. You can find a lot of the document from the uh, international NGO. They focus on how to build up this relationship with the, uh, between the NGO and, uh, and, and the enterprise. But, uh, for the scale, in our case, it's quite small. Uh, so uh, we try to uh, uh, use this framework to uh, do our project, OK? So uh, in our case, actually, we have a different uh, uh, stage. And the first stage is we try to uh, uh, connect with the uh, local NGO, inter international NGO, then even the, the, the Taiwanese uh, uh, enterprise, uh, like Camille, and, and the other one is uh, NSense. Uh, we try to convince them to collaborate with us, and they maybe have a, a large market over there, and we try to understand the local market, and we will help them. And so we, have, uh, uh, we, we build up the collaboration. This is the first, first stage. And when we start first stage and maybe move on the, uh, uh, the expanding stage, so we try to, uh, 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 okay, this is the expanding stage. We, try, we invite more en Taiwanese enterprise. And when, when we uh, collaborate with the Taiwanese enterprise, maybe we move to the uh, um, major, uh, major stage and try to go uh, overseas to know uh, more uh, overseas enterprise. Uh, like in Thailand, we uh, know the Synergy is, is uh, also the IoT association, and to know uh, where is the market and, and introduce the uh, IoT market in Thailand, something like that. And this is a major stage, and to, to uh, build up the uh, big family like this figure. Okay? And the story so far we have is uh, we actually uh, start the project in the, the end of the COVID 19, so at that time we cannot also cannot go abroad. So we cannot visit, we cannot physical visit the, our partners. So when we start actually from the web webinar to uh, 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 <coughs> meeting with a lot of the partner and to know their, their uh, requirement, their need, and also their, their, their stop. And so eventually we actually, um, uh, sorry, we actually uh, eventually we have a, a three or two uh, partners the first one actually is Nigeria. Nigeria partner is actually uh, introduced by the APC, the, 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 <coughs> the also Association Progress the Communication. This is a very big uh, international uh, 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 NGO. They introduced the, the Nigeria NGO Machi uh, for us. And we know it their requirement. They, they need the air quality monitoring uh, sensors, so we uh, so we just um, donate the uh, five-piece uh, CVO IoT sensor to them and try to make the uh, <coughs> collaboration. And so you can see uh, there is a location they install, and this is the install map. And they also think of, since uh, we uh, send this, uh, this uh, sensor to them, so they have, uh, we, we have uh, 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 a tutorial for them, educate them how to use this uh, sensor. After that, they can educate their, their, uh, uh, their, their CVO sensor organization to educate them how to use this sensor in Nigeria. So they have a different process. Okay, 
And then we very glad to see they uh, you, they 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 uh, focus their data on the data cap, and data cap actually donated by uh, the uh, embassy French French embassy in Nigeria. So uh, you can see the data over there, and you can check on the data over there. But the still a problem. This the, the sensor actually cannot work on the 24 hours and seven days, which means uh, they don't have uh, power and internet uh, always available. They only they store in the uh, the social center. So the social center start maybe at in start at 8 p.m. and end of the 5 5 5 p.m. at start at at a.m. and end of the 5 p.m. So at that time they have a they, they have a data correction, but after that they, they don't have a data. This is because of due to of the power and also internet. So uh, the data actually difficult to uh, systematical and societal uh, analysis, but still have workable to know to make people know the how worse of their air quality in Nigeria. So still work, okay, but not perfect, okay. So we can see uh, after that, we actually have a lot of the promotion, uh, this idea with the, the machi. And we have uh, pollution and, 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 and te uh, technical tech, also have an Eco Thursday activity, and they also have a lot of the forecast for this project. So <clears throat> this is really, really useful for the machi to, uh, to make the people know how the uh, air quality uh, status. And second, uh, second cast is with the in the Indi India with the uh, the uh, in the Kilara, uh, we try to uh, send the water box to monitor in the the Nasanani River in Kilara. So the idea is um, we and that's the idea. In the beginning, we as we actually have a lot of difficult to meet a lot of people in. India. We don't know who is a good uh, a partner uh, in India. So we meet a lot of person and group and to choose which one is better. And finally, we find the, uh, U, the UNDP office in India. But the problem is, um, the, the, yes, the UNDP, UNDP India office, they have a large, large uh, project that is, is called the Green Kilala project. And they they really need a water uh, water box water quality sensor. But the problem is they don't have a technology background, so it is difficult to educate them to know to use the water water sensor. It, this is a diff difficult thing in this project. So overall, we collaboration like this figure, and uh, the background of this uh, Nasanari uh, River is they have a, a large tea farm in in the hill. So when the, tea, when the farmer want to make the tea quality better, they will use a lot of fertilizing and also uh, pesticides. So uh, they will they, they will pollute the river. So they, that's why they need the water bars the more interesting water quality in the river. Okay, uh, in the when the collaboration, we uh, they very difficult to uh, have a educate them use this water box. It's water, water box is a CVO version. Uh, everything is open hardware, open source, so that we have to educate them uh, how to uh, use that. And so we have uh, two uh, workshops to, uh, to let them how to, how to build up and, 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 and install the uh, water box. But e eventually we even didn't see uh, the water box, where is the water box, the, the two pieces of water box in the Kilara. So this is very, very difficult to, you know, to, to continue this project. Okay. And the third one, we, I, I tried to explain this, uh, it's uh, air quality monitoring in Bangkok. It, actually, uh, the, we collaborated with the AIT and Dr. Salah is here. And since, since, uh, through his help, we know uh, PCD, the Pollution Control Department. And since we know that they're uh, we can convince them to use the CVO IoT. Actually, this is the one is the smart city. Five minutes, okay. Smart city version is a more uh, precise, precise version. And, uh, and we actually install the five or ten piece well, uh, in uh, Bangkok city. Okay. And this, this, uh, this corporation also have uh, Camille join for the data analysis and data science. Yeah. 
uh, we try to have uh, more data and then we can uh, 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 do something with the uh, data analysis for air quality. Uh, we hope that, uh, but still, the, 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 the project is still going on. <laughs> so we don't have a good result right now, but we, I can report uh, what we what we what we do what we done and what we, what we are going to do. And uh, this is a figure. I think uh, Dr. Salau will explain more about the, when they install these uh, uh, sensor with the uh, uh, PCD stations. So how to compare do the comparison. Uh, since, uh, a collaboration with uh, the, the IoT sensor, and uh, and then uh, we see they really uh, installed in the surrounding uh, Bangkok or the Bangkok city, and and we saw that the, the data and in the beginning the data seems like quite good, but finally we see the problem, and after three months later, the uh, the data still. Uh, the PM2, for example, the PM2.5 still low, low than the uh, PCD version, uh, PC, PCD stations. And we try to figure out what, why the, uh, the sensors, the data correction still lower than the, the PCD stations. So we, we find out the filter, the filter is stuck on a lot of dirty things like this, like the, uh, the, the, the right hand side figure. You can see the uh, filter the stocking on the, the dirty air. So they cannot work in very perfectly. So the data have some problem. And another thing is uh, the uh, sensor, work, the trans data transmission by the sensor is working, is have, have by the uh, uh, 5G or 4G transmission. So they have to buy the smart uh, SIM card. So the SIM card actually is cost. So who, who will pay the SIM card is a big problem. Even we have the sensor. So, uh, this always have a lot of problem in this uh, in this uh, project. So we're still going on how to figure out the, the, the problem and how to how to fix it. And since we have a ten piece uh, uh, this uh, ten piece air quality sensor, we think of we should uh, uh, decide how to uh, deployment the, deploy this uh, sen this sensor in the uh, good location. Uh, for example, we try to use the I IQ air. Uh, data to decide where is a good uh, location for it uh, to know or to solve the problem, air quality, uh, air quality problem. So this is the next step. We have to do the data analysis first uh, from the IQ air data, and then uh, we, we will decide where the location we do. Okay, uh, the, last, uh, the, the, the last slides I will tell you some experience I get. Um, uh, this is a message. Maybe you can you can get, and first one is a collaboration trans transform, uh, transformation. We actually this is an open collaboration uh, framework, and also based on the 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 CV tech CV technology, and we try to build up the open innovation. So it's the actually mutual mutual mutually uh, supporting. So uh, this is why I learn when 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 I try to uh, get the NGO enterprise uh, collaboration. Uh, I think this is the collaboration trans transformation. This is different from the tra traditional collaboration. This is the first one. And second one, we focus on the data. We just not, focus just, not just focus on IoT sensor. IoT sensor is just a tool to help us to correct data. We actually focus on data, how the data to solve this, uh, the, the, the issue and of the smart cities. So this is a different from the uh, 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 previous collaboration or the traditional collaboration. So this is the idea. I don't have the time to uh, to explain more about the whole the whole thing, but I think this is two messages you can get. Okay, uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for the insightful sharing. And uh, and now we are having our second speaker, Dr. Salawu. Uh, he will be sharing on the topic of how IoT solutions help the environmental issues and also uh, how cross-border collaborations can be built. Um, sorry, can you shift the slides for us? Because I don't know how to...
Okay, thank you. So I will continue the part from the Dongpo that what we did. By the way, I think for this session, we believe, I think this slide were, by, were expecting by 2010, everything have the sensor. But at that time, I work, I work a lot of on the sensor in OGC and all the technology. I believe now all the people realize that even though you come here, everything have the sensor is everywhere. And then just come to think what we try to work on the sensor that we are involved. For example, we have been a lot of concern about environmental problem around the world. For example, air, water, soil, even though the chemical thing. So that one of the thing happened around Southeast Asia, especially for the Bangkok, Vietnam, and Cambodia that due to the rapid urbanization that rising to the, the waste and all the strain. And another effect from the global climate change, as we know, today I came here very happy that temperature here, because in Bangkok now today it's 44 degrees Celsius. So <laughs> that is just the air temperature in Bangkok today. So this is the peak of the thing I was born. So now, just come to the real problem in Thailand. The number one I can share is about the air quality concern. So especially in Chiang Mai, and I think many of you have been there maybe five, 10 years, 20 years ago, but right now, this is not the same as before. So Chiang Mai have been, you will see in the news, number one, many times with the India, Delhi, or somewhere like, the main problem is about PM 2.5. So one thing that it may do, maybe due to like the crop burning, burning around, not, not only for Thailand, Myanmar, all the place, that is a problem, not the national problem, it's a regional problem also. And one thing that the main problem, why is Chiang Mai? The Chiang Mai is like the Taipei that is surrounded by the mountain. When the pollutant come here, they will stay there for a week or two weeks. And then as you see, that the major problem is the vehicle emission, industrial and the agriculture burning is one of the key things. And as we are aware, the problem of the PM 2.5 now is the health issue. So that related to the leaks of the lung cancer. Um, from last year to this year, we lost two, three professors and one, communi one reader community from the lung cancer in Chiang Mai. Three professors are the professor in Chiang Mai University. They work on like air quality, they work on like a lot of things. And then they pass away due to the lung cancer. This is quite the thing that people in Chiang Mai now realize that it's not just only the, not the good quality, it's concern it related to their, their life. And then people starting to realize about the air quality, they're looking for what are the air quality today, what is the problem, what are the quality outside. So I compare with the left side, we call the Air Force Thai. It's a website from the Pollution Control Department, which operate by EPA, something like that. So that they are the good quality, very high quality of the sensor. And then we compare with the right-hand side with the commercial one, which the community bought their own, like IQ Air. So that you can compare with amount of the station is dramatically different. From the PCD, I think that they, they totally they have less than like 50 stations. But compared with uh, the, the community thing, we have more sensor available around that one. But that in another question when people compare the left hand side in the same day, same time, the air quality in by government office say that 23 something like microgram PM2.5, but we, when we compare with the one from IQ Air, it show like 42 and 65, even though in the almost the same area. So the doubt, the question from the, the people is, which one should I believe? Which one is comparable? Which one is correct? However, the people, they still not believe the government. They say maybe the government try to hit in some truth, maybe the, lead you down the, the, the quality, the sensor. But however, that not also the doubt. Then when the Dongpo and then the team told me about this thing, and then I say like, one of the things that we should start is to compare with the PCD. And then if we just put the sensor there, people might say like, oh, what are the quality? How should I believe on that one? And then we start the first project. We put all the sensor, uh, the slide that you see from the Dongpo, 
uh, just for your information for the air quality, they have to approach for measurement the air quality and forget the beta lay and something. They are totally different. And then if we measurement the air quality, the PM 2.5 with different approach, they not show the same value. And then we decide that we put the sensor that we got from Dongpo in the same station that they use the same method or same approach, I think the beta lay. And then in that station, you see that we put all the sensor to measurement around two months to calibrate, to show that our sensor are in the good quality, reliable one. And then we start to ask the permission from uh, PCD to put our sensor in 10 station, same as same the station of the pollution control department. And then we monitor them so that you can see from the graph from the PM2.5, the above one. We, sh we, we got very good correlation, almost the same value, okay? In this station, we are in the Bangkok, just in front of the PCD department in the center of the Bangkok. And then we put two or three more stations. This one were in Lyon. Um, luck recently, we have the problem. Unfortunately, our station at the moment not working. The factory around that is bomb, is fire due to the hot weather or whatever. But I heard that it should, it's not accident. They're burning because they want to destroy some evidence which are in legal activity. We, they got some cadmium supposed to be disposed in the ground, but they do some recycle something. And then, but the PM2.5 show a little bit saturated. This is because the, the method, the approach that I told you, the approach to measurement the PM2.5, they are the different different approach, but however, the relative value show quite good one, but the amount is maybe not the same. And then as we show you this is the nearby to the center of Bangkok, Din Dang. And then at Dongpo already uh, told you that look like PM2.5 is lower estimate, quite lower estimate compared with the, 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 the in the same station with the PCD department. And same for this station, super low. And then, <laughs> but one we check, and then we found the problem, and then our partnership from Taiwan, quite curious, like, what happened there? And then they come, and then we take one van, and then sell out that. Uh, partly, yes, is is the too much uh, PM, but actually it's not only that one, because actually the PM 2.5 should be smaller than the, that filter, right? Should be part to that filter. Actually, this is the problem. I think we have the same problem in Taiwan, like in Thai Thailand, we have a lot of night market seed fruit, and then that is the partly of the oil. People buying your fried chicken, and the oil, they dirty, and then they block that air, then so that that air is cannot come. Because these two station, in the night time, we have the night market around that area, and then they have the activity, so that, that also the lesson learned, and then we learn, and then we try to find out how to make a better filter or what are the maintenance they have to care about because uh, we got the, the information from our partner that for normally they, they change the filter around one, one a year, not like this one. For this, maybe we have to change twice a year, something like that. And then another thing that we have the problem in Thailand about the water pollution. Uh, I should come to share you, for example, you see the map, this one. This is the map of the Bangkok. The background map, the background map show the blue color. That is the water usage, okay? I can say I, I got the big project to rewrite the wastewater treatment plant for whole Bangkok. So that means every, every single dot of the, the water, so that means we're going to have one water. More dark, that means more, more wastewater. The green area show the waste current waste, the active wastewater treatment plant. The yellow one were the ongoing project. The red one is still be planning, not sure it's going to happen in one or two years. So that means you can see, and the, the black one, N1, N2, that means the area which wastewater never treat, okay? So that you can see the current active one is show only the green area. That means the green and the yellow one that all the wastewater have been treated. That means the less of that water just come out from your house, go to the river, go to the ocean. They have not totally not been treated. So the problem for the, that, that also the big problem for Thailand now. 
and we we come up with the idea what to helping them and that that we try to implement that the water quality so water quality sensor is a next step that we want to involve and then we got the same project that we involve we try to monitor that at least the do or ph and so on and then we cooperate with another partner just that we got the question just put the sensor what it is and then we cooperate with one in uh, that actually in the incubator company in in AAT they try to make the floating wetland so that meanwhile they also treat the water and then we just think like why we just treat why we not monitor the water quality in the river or in the pond that they try to treat and then we work with them we carry bed we check the quality the same process we carry bed we check the quality and then so at the end we we got some initiate project that we want to work. This is one of one of a little bit famous one in in Chiang Mai province. They try to promote this small canal at the tourist or cultural community tourist place, but the problem is the water quality is not that good. Then if you travel around and they got the bad smell, people are not happy. And then we propose the idea that we can put that beautiful floating wetland with the sensor, with the IoT, so that they can see, they can monitor. And just to give you the idea, so that you'll see how the dirty of the water, that this just to show the tourists. But if you go a little bit upstream, this is the real thought of that canal. Um, the problem is the water is come from the north, and then we have one water gate, the flood gate number one. And on the right hand side, we have one big river we call Pring River. But this canal, Mekha Canal, is directly go to the city of the Chiang Mai. The thing that they worry is, they worry that if they pass away the water too much, it may be flooded to the Chiang Mai. What they just put the water on that ripping river, and then the wastewater comes. So that means in this canal, there is no good water. Only bad water is coming for this one. So that's why the water quality that you see is so bad. And then we try to manage, okay, can we monitor the amount of the water, control the water gate, and even though the water quality at the same time, make it more smarter thing. Right now, they said, we don't know, we just protect the city first. It, because if the Chiang Mai city is flooded, that is a big problem for them. Then that, we try to, to utilize that, that kind of thing. And another thing that we have another problem is the air quality about the CO, and then many Many people try to say net zero. I try to delete the carbon, but the one of the question I ask them like, how much the carbon you release every day? Do you know? Do you get idea? For example, for the logistic thing, and then we try to find out how we can use like the data. Um, we can make simply simplify like how many kilometers you running with speed and what kind of gasoline. But it is possible that we we questionnaire the the people, the taxi driver every day, right? And then we got the data. This is the, the sample that if you're driving with this kind of the fuel tire with this speed, we can estimate roughly how much the carbon you're going to release. And then we got uh, this big data from like the trans local transportation bureau. All the dot is a taxi. We got the taxi monitor from the GPS. And we can analyze the green one and the, the green one and the red one. The green one, that means they have been occupied. So that means they have the customer. The, uh, sorry, the, the red one, that means they have the customer. The green one, that means they have no customer. They're just running around, looking for the customer. We try to analyze from that carbon, like during this speed, during that speed, during they are free, during they, are, they have the customer, how much the carbon they release. And what we found, most, uh, we have the like distribution, the bad, Emission carbon, good emission carbon. The red one show the bad one. That around 25% driving in the low speed traffic jam and then so on. And then, but that is another thing. What we found most, 60%, the taxi emit the carbon during no customer. That actually that they're running around and then they got the customer only like 60%. And then we found like, the area where they release more thing due to the not available. Then we try to help them, maybe they have big space so that they can 
stop there, not running around. Maybe use the app, use the IoT. That that just the initial idea that we we make with them, and then that maybe the the thing that I think the IoT and all the thing that we try to make try to make the data for the city and then the city and then the community to know uh, that kind of the problem that they have. Okay, that all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Salawood. And I think our two speakers just are sharing that um, these are real time issues, uh, real life issues that which might cause death and healthy issues. And um, also, it requires daily care, and we, people need to maintain that. It, it will cost a lot, and uh, people's commitment might shifting around. So uh, it's quite difficult, and it also has lots of lots of stakeholders to consider. So uh, our third. Uh, speakers might have some solutions on how to work smarter on the, this kind of initiative. So let's welcome Dr. Roy. Okay, uh, thank you for having me here. Today I'd like to share uh, this uh, Baron AI empowerment. Uh, it's uh, empowering uh, citizen engagement with uh, generative AI and open data for visualizing environmental insights. Okay, <laughs> very long title, but actually why we, how, uh, we do care about the environment, but what do we have? Uh, we, we are not a government, we, but what we have is uh, science, research science, and uh, partners, good partner, and the technology, okay? Uh, so it's just, just uh, don't push sure. Um, in Taiwan, it's a very, uh, how do you say, it's a, it's a, I think it's a successful uh, experience about from the civil tech to uh, uh, allow the, the, the uh, to let people uh, do really uh, notice about the, the uh, air quality control is, uh, uh, is a very important with, uh, with those air, uh, IoT sensors. Uh, you know, the Ministry of the Environment has have deployed over uh, 10K uh, low-cost IoT sensors uh, since uh, 2019. Uh, system. So you can, as you can see, uh, mostly uh, website website of Taiwan will deploy lots of IoT things over here because you get lots of uh, you know factory uh, or industrial area over here. So keep collecting uh, mostly uh, PM 2.5 because PM 2.5 uh, is uh, actually quite serious in, because of the sea uh, sudden uh, wind direction. The, those uh, PM 2.5 usually circulate around the west side of Taiwan. They cannot come out. So the air quality control is quite important here. So, uh, so we uh, keep collecting those PM 2.5 data. And it's a very good thing. Share it as uh, open data uh, on the platform, uh, C, uh, civil IoT Taiwan uh, data service platform. Okay. So with those IoT data, we keep collecting those information. They also have a website here. Uh, you can keep, uh, let the people keep uh, monitoring the air quality of Taiwan every day, uh, every minutes. Okay, <laughs> you got minutes of data. Uh, but what we uh, have uh, the, those, what, what we just keep, uh, keep thinking about what can we do next? Um, actually, in Taiwan, it's, uh, it's only monitoring uh, those uh, those air quality. If it's a good, okay, it's very good. But you know, during those carbon or Rain season, the air quality is usually good, but when it's bad, what can we do? Okay, so this uh, is the thing we, 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 uh, we uh, want to uh, have uh, more uh, deeper discussion to today. Yeah, it's, uh, we keep collecting those uh, data and. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, actually, we collecting those data is current, uh, only the raw data. We, we say it's the raw data. Uh, we, but what, what we do care about is uh, what our goal is uh, we want to have the, we talk about the semantic of the data, means, which means uh, the, the PN2.5 value right now it uh, shows the, the current issue about its uh, air quality is good or bad. But what we do care about is uh, where the pollution come from? Where the, how the pollution, if there's a, uh, 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 those pollution, uh, maybe it's uh, illegal emission by the factory, or it's uh, just a crop burning, open burning. There's lots of uh, cost, or sometimes the fire accident of those factory. They will cause uh, those 
uh, there is uh, pollution, air pollution. Yeah. So we how to track in how to, those pollution uh, how they spreading over t the time. So this uh, this is what we say the symmetry of those data. Okay. So from the raw data to the pollution, that's a uh, that's the thing we can really reveal the uh, what's the what what happened in our environment in Taiwan. You know. But really, air quality because you cannot you cannot track in those uh, with with your eyes. So what can you do is uh, with those data? We can visualize those things. And over here, it's a uh, I'll just say uh, we keep collecting the data and we develop, develop several uh, dashboard for those uh, for those uh, AI um, monitoring something. But currently, uh, we with the GPT, yeah, that's uh, so we can. We try to use the generative AI to reveal those, uh, we say, systematic, those uh, the pollution events. Uh, we call it Barang, the platform that we, that we uh, develop. So this is the idea. Okay, the <laughs> data flow, quite tangy uh, part, but you can try to understand, <laughs> try to express it in a clear way. The first one, the sensor, we just say the Ugalat Disabled Hardware sensor to collect those data. And those data actually can can be uh, collected in the in the data format like uh, this one, like a CSV. It's a it's a it's a. You can say it's as a table. This this data is a maybe hourly data with generate as hourly data and got latitude, longitude, and the PN two point five value. You got this data, and you can share it on the. We already have open data, but actually, when you want to reveal uh, some kind of events. They can share it on the open there on the maybe in, on the GitHub patch as a you know as a you you uh, clean those data and transform to the, the this uh, this CSV this this data uh, have those uh, event uh, you can want want to want to share and you can ask the Barang AI to uh, generate the web patch for you and also share on the GitHub patch okay so here is a uh, is some cast demo is that. You know, in Taiwan, there's uh, uh, there's lots of uh, just uh, great uh, biomass burning during the Tom sweeping day. You know, people you just set up the fire to uh, burn those grass, and lots of smoke. We know, and we always say, okay, this is somewhere far away. So, but actually, what what we do is uh, we just uh, collect those data, and you can this is a platform something like a chat GPT, but we could we develop it as a bar run. So. We just call out the, the, the AI agent. Sorry, it's in Chinese, but it's, uh, it's called the, the name of this agent. And you say, okay, you can, you can provide your data with those device ID or let you long to you and sense ID. And then we just give, uh, it's, it's just say, I uh, share those data. On, I put the data on the GitHub and they give me the file and ask it, uh, generate the map for me and give it the title is uh, this data is about uh, Taichung area, March uh, 23rd. Uh, yeah, during the March or April, lots of this kind of biomass burning. And you just generate the, uh, w the web patch for you. And it's keep generating. <laughs> and then now during this generating, this, uh, you can see the how they use it. Because there's, uh, there's uh, some kind of uh, uh, Data format, or and uh, the, this kind, uh, based on experience, we, we got several dashboard to, uh, we usually usually have a programmer to uh, have to to uh, uh, need to develop those map for to for those kind of report. So we just embedded into the uh, into this AI agent, uh, so we can generate those things for us, and. Uh, it takes some time, but okay, maybe faster, faster. Keep generating the code, and then okay, okay. After you generate the code, you know this that uh, it's just generate the the whole uh, HTML for for us, and you can just open it. Okay, you can see there's the uh, there's the uh, the map. Okay, I just play the, <laughs> the the outcome that you just have. Okay, this is the, the map generated by uh by those uh generative AI. And we can see it's uh it's a, you can generate this kind of 
dynamic map, okay, you can see the, the PN 2.5, the green points means the, the value is lower than uh, uh, 54, but the red one larger than this means there's a, a serious pollution. And we can see over here, uh, okay, we can see this, this area, this is the mo those mountain area, this point and this point, next to a uh, tomb area over here. You see, uh, there's a red, uh, red one, it's a, we call it red dragon. Yeah, it's a, why is the grass burning? You can see this in this day. Wow, this spreading because uh, the, the winds come from south. So those two points, there's just the, the PN2 point just spread into to the, over here, is a, this is the city, Taichung city. And you know, I live somewhere over here. <laughs> I was saying that's a, somewhere far away, you know, those, those biomass burning. But I saw this, oh my God, I live here. <laughs> those small, those pollution, really, in fact, I just shared it. Lung cancer, okay, that's a very serious e issue. So <laughs> when we generate those map, okay, so, and you can, uh, uh, if everybody, if, you know, as a, as a, maybe with a generative, generative AI, you can easily generate those kind of map and combine with the news that the follow I just showed. So it's a, it will be, uh, everybody can engage with this kind of, uh, this biomass burning issue, yeah. Um, so that's the idea we try to, uh, try to, try to express. And, share with, uh, with you all. And uh, as, actually, uh, there's one uh, further thing. With this kind of, uh, 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 with a generative, generative AI, you, you actually write a code to show, to reveal the PN 2.5, right? So the CSV file, as I just say, be, uh, behind this, actually in your code, you, uh, the way you use the, the data is actually the so-called semantic meaning of, the, of this, uh, of the data. So you can ask the, it's quite a coding thing, but it, it just try to understand, yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's over here, there's, uh, there's a, you can ask a gener generative AI just help you to generate, uh, you know, there's a, there's a CSV, uh, there's a file, uh, make it larger, okay. You can see there's a, there's a file, data source over here, and uh, there's a description because I generate with the, uh, the, the title that I want, and there's uh, the how the, the, the code behind, there's the code generated. And the, the, there's a JavaScript, okay, you can just know the, the, some kind of source code. With the code behind, how, how they use the data is actually the, you can reveal the data semantic of this, this open data. So you can also share it online, so uh, people can use this data with this metadata and the, 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 the data source to uh, tell more story with, with this map. Yeah, different kind of story that you want. They just say, I live here. Maybe someone lives somewhere. Yeah, you can, with those data, everybody share those data and generate lots of this kind of map. You can um, let people do, uh, engage with this uh, air pollution issue. Uh, that's, that's the, uh, the idea that I want to uh, share with you today. And this air pollution is just one issue, one of the, one of the uh, environment issues. Actually, as just Salahu uh, Professor said, the water uh, and uh, some air issue also kind of the, the biomass and or uh, illegal emission, as you say, or uh, from the, the pollution from the street. Traffic, traffic is also cause this kind of issue. In Taichung is a, uh, Power station, right? Okay, some kind of issue over there. <laughs> Those issues we can um, engage uh, with this, uh, not only the government, you know, the environment, because we live in this, uh, in, this in the city, so we can uh, engage in this kind of uh, topic with science, technology, and uh, AI to it will be stand behind us. Okay, this is my talk today. Just thank you. <laughs> Thanks for insightful sharing, and uh, I think that Roy and his team that really makes all this, you know, map and visualization looks really easy to understand. And um, but it it has a bunch of works after uh, behind this all these works. So um, if you are interested in this uh, AI or a, a other technology, so uh, the master is here, so you can ask him today. And 
And now we are going to the, the QA session, so I'm asking all the speakers to come ahead and join us on these seats. And can you guys show in the slide for us? Thank you. Uh, I've seen some questions on the slides already. Uh, for everyone here, and please also uh, submit your questions or thoughts on Slido so that we can interact directly. And yeah, let's go for the first one. Um, what was the change after collecting, collecting the data and how it affects how do you affect change air condition more better? Uh, I guess <laughs> we can, it's a broad question and a legit one. So uh, maybe we'll start from Dongpo. Yeah, it's a broad question, yes. But it's very important than just that data collection. In, I, in my experience, uh, we actually uh, don't, not donate, we, uh, sell, we, we, we send a lot of the air quality sensor to other countries. Uh, they do collect a lot of data, but more important thing is uh, when you have the data, after that you do the analysis and you know the problem over there, and then more important thing is uh, how do you solve this problem? How the government have the policy to face this problem? Or you have the policy or you have the solutions to solve this problem? So the attitude of the government, uh, local government or central government, is very important. And uh, even we discussed with the Salau, say uh, we actually have a lot of meeting with the uh, uh, the, the the bank bank up bank up city government and couple times, and they actually know the the how bad of the air quality in Bangkok. But the problem is they don't actually have not a policy to solve this problem. So very interesting thing is that even they know the problem over there, but they don't have the policy to, fit, to fix it. So what can we do? We, we, only, we only reveal this problem, but we actually don't have a, a, a any, any method to deal with it problem. So I think more important thing is, uh, in, my, in my point of view, the government attitude and the, 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 the policy to do is more important. Yeah. It's that's the reason why we have this kind of initiative that civic tech and um, power from the civil society might have uh, potential solutions for the lack of policy and lack of capacity of the public sector. So, is there any uh, adding from other two speakers? Yeah, in, because we have lots of collaboration with the uh, Ministry of the Environment in Taiwan, we know that how should we deal with this? That first, of course, we need law, but why, why we need to set a law for, to, to, uh, for this big, what we do is, uh, I, mean, I just, I just keep, keep, keep uh, remind uh, what we have, our power is uh, science, okay? In the environmental monitoring, you know that there's uh, one term is called source, source tracking, source tracing, maybe, the, the pollution, where the pollution come from, you got with those data, with the, it's just a visualize the, where the pollution source come from, and then we ask, is it legal? Or is it illegal? If it's illegal, we gotta set up a law or the policy to deal with this environment. So, but be, before those laws, set up laws, uh, set those law or policy. Before this, you need to know the source and uh, some kind of pattern of this kind of pollution. So you can have some kind of uh, idea to dealing with those issues. Yeah. So that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for my Experience, I can share two things from the sensor can, can help the, the people first. They can take care of themselves. First, we have, you have to survive first. If you get the information, the bad quality today, what you to protect yourself, that is the first one. And how this one helping the government office, I think partly they have, they're helping them. For example, in Thailand, I can share you for mainly it, the problem is from after harvest, crop burning. And we have very strict law, very good thing and then they, the farmer are more smart I can share for example if you are the owner of the of the if we found that you burn okay we will fire you something but what they did it they asked somebody to burn and then they just take a tour to go somewhere else and then prove that 
I'm I am the owner of the land, but I'm not there during the burning, and then they rotate something like that. Even though recently, at what I share, the burning is the for Thai. It's not the Thai one. You are the island, but we are nearby country. Sometimes we burn from outside country. But recently, the government just make something like what what we found in U.S. They ban some product. If we found this product were burn and then import from that country, those country, we will not buy that product. Or we going to sue some of the actually the the importer in Thailand. So that that are starting the the process. I think largely at least better than nothing. That it it, it can helping. Yep. Any adding or I'll move on to the next question? Uh, I, we have a specific question for Dr. Salawu, and uh, uh, our friends are wondering that uh, if the Thai government support uh, if the Thai government support detailed air quality information, which might reveal some truths and affect impressions. Uh, I would say yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I can share one information from this project. We try to put the sensor because we found one advantage of the project that you in, you install several sensor in industrial park, mm -hmm. right? And then so that we can trace where the sort of the pollutant from factory, and then we approach the same approach. We say that we will put there and then, but industrial park in Thailand is the private sector, and then they said it's okay. We can allow you to install, but. They're going to shut up the energy, power thought, how much, the rental for South Pole. For, for that, I, I think they didn't want to know the truth, that that is a, the real one. But for the government office, I think they, 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 want, they want to know the, the problem. But uh, another problem that we will did now, we work with the PCD, which is the National Railway. What the problem? They cannot maintain a sensor. They can okay, I can buy the I can buy the sensor, but every year who going to go to whole Thailand to maintain the, the e sensor. What they want to do, they want this one to city office, to village, to district office, so that they own their own sensor and then they, they can maintain that one. I think that that uh, strategy that we, we try to put it up. Yep. Okay, thanks for the sharing. And um, I guess we can move on to this interesting question that uh, do you think, a uh, three of you, <laughs> do you think uh, in the end, environmental issues still need to rely on the government resources or what could a long-term strategy roadmap look like? Maybe we can start from Dongpo. <laughs> this is also a very broad uh, question. Yeah, long-term strategy is quite important for the, uh, the, 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 the environmental protect for a government. And in Taiwan, we, yes, we have a long-term policy and strategy for the environmental protection. And like, it, like uh, Roy said, uh, actually for the air pollution, we have a, a strategy for that, uh, how to trace the so source air pollution and how to trace the also source from the water pollution. Even, even the local government, they don't have, they, they, st they have the, their, their own, uh, a method, methodology to trust on the uh, the source of the air uh, air water pollution, and lots of the uh, uh, methodology or strategy actually very important to in in in, in the government. But uh, I think the C CVO uh, CVO society organization also very important thing is um, uh, if only relied on the government, the government only take care or interest in their, uh, their benefit. So the, some benefit not, not interest from uh, citizens. So C, the CVO, CVO organization, uh, civil organization quite important thing is how to uh, help to uh, aware or uh, make the uh, government know uh, what, what is the, uh, uh, the topic or the the, the issue uh, the citizen uh, take uh, care or uh, interest. So I think how to make the uh, communication between the government and the CVO organization is very quite important uh, to, uh, to make each other to communication about it. Uh, the, the, the environmental issue is quite important, I think, yeah. Yeah, and I have to cut in for a, a, a little. And 
I just found it interesting that three of you guys are from different, you guys are different st types of stakeholders, you know, from the civil society yeah. and from academic and from enterprise. But you are all in this project and you all see uh, you are facing uh, different obstacle difficulty together. But I believe that you guys see things differently. You know, uh, you guys have different interest in this pro project. So uh, maybe while you are answering this question, you can share a bit more um, what kind of, like, uh, just like Dompo mentioned, we have to um, keep people together. We have to keep doing communications. We have to uh, be aware that uh, their commitments might be decreased and we have to um, make sure they have in their best interest in this project. So um, it's quite tricky, but uh, we'd like to know more about this kind of lab opinions about it, so please. Okay, so uh, in being this business, <laughs> business point of view, okay, we always uh, uh, find something, it's not just, not re you want to rely on government or rely on the state? Yeah. No, what we're gonna do is uh, set up the business model mm -hmm. and we need to cooperate together. And that's our, the same, the, the one thing we, we need to have is uh, our goal is the same. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, we want the good air quality, okay? Good environment, that's what we want. But also, also, we want the economic growth. We need those batteries to, you know, we, we need to make money with those batteries. So this kind of balance issue, of course, is very difficult. But what we're gonna do is uh, we need to control those, you need to grow together. You need, we need the economic growth, the interest changed over the time. So the civic, we, we live in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in those cities, in those areas. So you need to monitor in the, and uh, you, you know, which, how, we, how, we can, how we can do is uh, reveal those style, which I just say the business model. <laughs> Something like business model, but actually, uh, you know, for the government, where's the pressure come from? Mm -hmm. For the citizen, uh, you know, you, when you call to the call center, they, oh, that's a uh, lot of smoke, lots of bad smell. They, they got those, okay, that's one call center. That's a, uh, they complain about the, the bad air quality. They got KPI for this. Yeah. So what we, can, what we can do, you keep calling. For, and you, actually, you, you are monitoring and you, you make, make this, uh, this, this city better, right? And for the government, when you take, have this, those information, we can say that you, you gotta have a good policy, good law, or some kind of uh, new technology to handle this issue. Uh, yeah, so this a, this a, this a government can do for the, so the, you know, the set up those things. And actually, if we, we can connect these uh, two information together, we build up this kind of, uh, it's not a busy model, but it's, it's an information flow like this from the citizen to the government, and the government can, when they do something, they can share with, the, the, with, with those people, and this will be a good, everybody, we have the same goal, to make the environment better, and also have the, our economic growth. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the thing, we try to uh, use those information, you know, visualization tool, the start, is a try to handle it this way. And also we can have uh, experiences about uh, this, uh, that's me about uh, the farm, you know, it's a pig farm. They also got that smell. But actually, we, when we reveal those things, then they just try to, oh, maybe I can uh, make, our, make my farm uh, cleaner uh, without bad smell and uh, have, a, have a new smart, uh, smart farm or smart <laughs> industry area. So make it a, a green uh, industrial area. So they can have the same goal. And then you can collaborate together to make the environment better. Yeah, that's our. <laughs> moving to the academic part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but however, one, one thing AAT is uh, academic even though, but we, we want it at more practical one. We want the, the problem that can be solved. But I think government, I think everything, everything, every single thing is a part of the every human mean government, citizen, stakeholder, everybody have to take care all of that one. Um, yes, government have to do control, support, building framework, making clear, making play game, regal thing, but however communities still need to, to, to keep the environmental problem, not just complain and then we still throw away. For example, I'm talking about the wastewater treatment. 
government officer yes we we going to build waste water treatment but we going to charge you something but the city said no 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 I will not allow you to charge and then we ask some uh, water selling you can you charge ten percent and if you don't know it's not my business we was just it's just not my mission. It will be the problem is to be there. I think everything have to be involved, cooperate, but should be clear. For example, uh, just share you the BMA Bangkok City Office. They adopt what they call traffic phone do. You can think it's just like the GitHub city complaint, so that every citizen com can pro can open the issue, compare com complain something to each district, and then the city officer will say like. Each district will be use this at the KPI. If how much the story have, how much the issue have been happened, and then how much the issue have been closed, and then show something. This is like they they just starting that one, but we still just thinking this is the database. I can delete, I can update, delete status something, right? But if it were like the blockchain, so that nobody can change the the, the database. So that we we want to ask them to come up to the next step, like not a sinking database anymore. Yep, that can be the next step. Yep. Uh, according to you guys' sharing, uh, I could say that uh, three types of us mm -hmm. I was serving as a mediator that between the uh, citizens and the public sector. So, uh, citizen point out where's the issues, where is the problem is, and um, we might work out to some. Uh, potential solutions and maybe prototype of it and we can have better communication with the govern government and uh, they can decide whether to apply or not but we show them the direction of how to solve it so, um, uh, also I would like to extend a little bit and ask Dong Po that um, in your experience and specifically in civic sense project and how can we secure uh, a concrete collaborations like three of us you know I know there's a lot of things you want to share so uh, maybe you can <laughs> actually this point I don't want to share too much it's a secret <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Uh, just a kid and this is how uh, very uh, difficult to uh, uh, to make a partnership with the, uh, in, in, the in, in the corporation and also the academic and we do a lot of things with a lot of webinar, online meeting, and also think of how to make the interest to both sides and even the city and government, yes. how to make the interest to, uh, to all of them. And this is quite, quite difficult to, to do it. And uh, I think, uh, I, I don't want to say I, I, we make success or how, how, how good we met. But at least we could try to make this uh, this project work, and we invite the uh, enterprise and academic work together. Even uh, we 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 try to go a lot of different country to sell our to sell our idea and to try to uh, solve their their environmental problem. It's kind of the thing is that they 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 this is idea is workable, but still need some resource and some more. Uh, enterprise or more uh, um, more uh, uh, stakeholders to join us, and we we so we can have more power to convince uh, local government or or the other uh, organization to join us to to fix this problem. So this is what I hope we next step. Maybe we can invite more uh, stakeholders to join together. But I hope I hope. But I also worry about in, in the Taiwanese government, actually, after this uh, project, they don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, will be shifting. Yeah, 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 shifting. Yeah. So, so this is also the problem. So, mm -hmm. yes, we, uh, we, 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 get, we have a little bit ch achievement, but still have to go on. This is my conclusion. Yeah. Um, by the time we're saying governments, there's another question that uh, what's the government's attitude about this kind of civil initiative in Taiwan and Thailand. Uh, are they trying to learn from this practice or, you know? So maybe the thing that you're sharing, Dong Po, you can, we, we can elaborate more on this topic. Uh, maybe from Salawu first, yeah. Uh, I have to say, we, we met with government officer, big, most of the biggest side in BMA already. Yeah. Yeah. And we, have, we found two things. Yeah, we, we found a dinosaur, and then we found a new gen. Right? Uh, but we, 
I think we met you met the new vice vice president of the BMA yeah. with yeah. they call themselves city city entrepreneurial, right? Yeah. And then they are like NPOs or so that they try to make the city better one, and they are quite happy to work with us, yeah. but a real government conservative people still a little bit not clear what what are benefit what are the process yeah. what we are do do we can we start from the MOU or MOA first no no we will not go to that way yeah I have to say yeah some still I get the idea and want to make this implement just care the output but somebody care the, from the first step why we have to do they have the people to care the output the people to care why we have to do but what we want, we want to do something that get the benefit. And I believe at least some of them starting to rely and then uh, many more people think about that one. But if we don't start, that will not happen. That, that what we believe. At least even though 10% of the people, they rely and then happy to work with us, I think we work with that 10 people. Otherwise, if we not start, so that means zero, right? So that, that was my idea. And just to share the idea that you say how we cooperate this one, um, I maybe we we are in open source together. We start from open source, so that means we didn't want to start everything from scratch. Yeah. So we know that people work this well, pick it up, work together. One thing that I I might want to share like uh, climate change. The problem in the world now is two more impact. Only one people in the world cannot. So that problem enough, well enough, or let's point well enough, we should, I don't want to go to that Mount Everett alone, for sure. We want to work all together. So that means more. So that we, you need adventure, right? Even though only one Iron Man cannot fight thing, right? So that you need a team. You need a good team to work together because one people, one people are not enough. So that, that were my idea. Then that maybe I, I believe that it comes from Open Source Foundation that we have that kind of the initial idea. Feel free to add in, yeah. Yeah, um, I just say business model <laughs> in business point of view. Actually, uh, you know, in the government, they do care about those. Uh, we, what we, we, we firstly we need to know how, what people care about those issues. That uh, is very important. And uh, what's the government's? Uh, you know, they got their their policy or their plan. And when you align this together, okay, you find. For example, for example, it's just. Uh, Government want to have a technology growth. Uh, we have, they they do care about it, those AI technology. Let's uh, and uh, let's take maybe it's about IoT. Uh, it's also the smart city, smart city technology. They 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 have this kind of budget. Then we know okay this this budget. How do you gonna, uh, you you need to handle this the the, the how about the, maybe the air quality? What, what kind of topics really uh, people do care? So we align this together. The make is a uh, the, they got a budget. They got the. the they can uh, you know develop those, uh, deploy those IoT, and then really have those good uh, outcomes. And um, so that's the how we gonna how, how, uh, we keep uh, try to have find those kind of connection together. Then then we can really uh, make things happen. So yeah. So I think that's uh, that's uh, what. what what we try to do, that, uh, and we try to educate. No, not educate. We just guide those <laughs> government. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of government. Uh, you know, there's a there's a partner. We, we always always say partner. They really uh, aware about this. Not just not just uh, the. We need to care about what kind of. We we could talk about the not only tech, uh, technology, but also uh, value creation. We talk about what kind of value you do create with this budget. You need to care about this. And so they aware about this, they do uh, listen to people. The, yeah, they do care about this issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard something. I, in my observation or also experience, as the Salawu say, uh, I actually last year we met the uh, vice mayor of the Bangkok city, and the mayor, the vice mayor, actually very. Could know uh, the Taiwanese uh, CVO uh, develop, CVO organization develop. They also know the Govern Zero mm -hmm. activity, got hacks on everything. They, he know from website and he, actually he, he, he know everything. When I make pretension, our solution, he very great to see happen in Thailand. But the problem 
thing is what I observation is that even the vice mayor know everything about the, the CVO uh, uh, activity, but the employee of the uh, the bank of city actually don't have this kind of knowledge. So yes, I agree with you, and some they 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 are they are need some education to the employee of the city the city government. They when they know uh, what is the the, the CV tag and also the CBO uh, CBO uh, organization what they do, and I think that that gap have to bridge. Yeah, and this one thing, and two thing is uh, actually the quite some years ago the congressman the previous congressman Clark Kong, okay. Clark Kong actually have uh, their uh, uh, CBO organization and it's a social innovation institute. I think they still working on. But you can see the uh, the voice of the uh, CVO organization is uh, decreased a lot in the recent year in Thailand. Uh, maybe you know, maybe it also the government control or something. I don't know. It is a uh, political thing in in Thailand. So um, I see the problem in Thailand, and and in my observation, the CVO organization or CVO uh, activity quite important in 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 Thailand. Maybe not just political. We can focus on technology. Yeah. I just want to echo that um, we can really see that uh, uh, our collaboration or education or guidance uh, to the public sectors and in fact it's like two culture that from our side we, we work really agile and we ha want to have uh, flex, flex, be more flexible on everything. But the government side will have that need a concrete uh, paperwork or a they see all this flexibility as uh, uncertain and risk, so they might might not willing to to have, you know, have a that adventure with us. So we we still have to keep guiding them, so that let them know that it's doable and everything will be have a little bit of achievement. That yeah, things will go to the good side. So it's a work in progress, and just want to echo with that. And also um, when we're saying about the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, part that Don't Pour just sharing that um, in fact uh, we're still trying to do that within this project so it's still also an ongoing process <laughs> yeah I hope so uh, and we hope that we can this kind of uh, collaboration a model of this kind of collaboration can sustain ourselves uh, without with or without the public sector's uh, uh, resource so okay and maybe we can move on to next question um, it's quite a tricky one uh, ju uh, just uh, curious uh, about how enterprise can benefit from this model of initiative. Can civil society sustain a charge of the corporation service? Um, I guess it, uh, this friend of this question is wondering that can we handle the cost up front Camille? <laughs> no, <laughs> no we, we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't really pay Roy anything <laughs> beside the, you know. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's not, not, not that difficult, actually. We, we, when you want to de uh, develop a new technology or an, yeah. uh, as a new service or a new product, actually, you, you need really some, uh, the most important thing is uh, you need a re uh, TA, your, your yeah. real user, to use it. And uh, uh, to uh, the first 100 users is very, very, very important. You need to collect those information and how, as we say, it's a value creation. How kind of value create they, they can uh, you can have or what kind of pain point we really solve uh, with this technology or this service? So, well, why we uh, our we, we just develop our product or not maybe our service during this kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do have benefit from this collaboration. And uh, I would think yeah every uh, yeah uh, how to say can we sustain actually. That's, uh, that's another question. The first one is that uh, you, you do have some, uh, some topic, good topic too, and your service is good. And in, in, uh, with our experience, you really uh, solve those kind of issue. Um, and uh, the value, the more uh, of the, the value you create, actually somebody will have the budget to find you. <laughs> yeah. So it do happens. So, mm -hmm. so what you cannot do is just, just do the, handle the, this is very, very important. What you want to, in this environment, you need to uh, handle the, 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 what's the, the most, uh, most pain, 
difficult issue of your user, your maybe your uh, target, maybe whatever. There's yeah, that that that's that really pinpoint, and you can solve it. Mm -hmm. Some kind of project will come, <laughs> no matter from government or from the business, uh, they, they will find you to collaborate with. So that's uh, that's uh, that's our experience. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess uh, we have little time, like two minutes. So uh, I'm not going to uh, continue about the questions, but I would like to have the three of you to have a little uh, brief sentence for every participant as a takeaway, just simple sentence. <laughs> yeah, just to share from, from the issue project, I think uh, the one that we got from Dongpo and all the experience, I also share that uh, uh, Roy say like, uh, I still believe everything we give at the opportunity Opportunity is, is nothing that we can find out ourselves. So this, this kind of thing, that cooperative and then the initiative idea, I think were the good lesson learned from us. Mm -hmm. And then we, I think we are very happy to work with all the people and all the things. And then whatever we share from what we did, I think I'm very happy to, to get this o o occasion. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, I think the, let's say we, as a partner, it's, uh, the very important things are the philosophy behind this. We, what we want, we do, we do to have a passion. You have a passion to make the environment better first. That's our passion. And have, with this first, then use, uh, no matter your technology or your business experience or something to, to, to achieve this uh, common, our goal. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very important. So uh, when I think it's a, uh, it's a very important to keep going. And we, we, uh, looking for those partners to have the same goal, we can share, uh, join our group, maybe yeah, to to have a more collaboration together to uh, to provide no matter what kind of you, you all everybody have your your uh, skill, yeah, your yeah. superpower. We as a <laughs> as a team, that's a, that's a very good to have this kind of uh, partnership, yeah. So, uh, have, but the first importance, as I just say, you have this philosophy first to uh, we don't. Uh, have the same goal to make the environment better. So, uh, and then the, our team will keep, keep uh, as a partner to uh, work together. Yeah. Okay, hey, maybe uh, just two sentences. The first one is I uh, very, very appreciate our good partners, including uh, Saru and Roy and the other NSENS, SY. This is very good partners and uh, give, uh, give us a lot of help. Uh, I mean, OCF a lot of helps and make this project work. And uh, I, I, I actually not, I'm, this is not my area. I, I also scientist, I'm geoinformation scientist. So my, 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 uh, <clears throat> my expertise is about uh, geoinformation and how to make this, this uh, framework, how to make this uh, init initiate work. It's also my, not my area. So, but I make a little bit of, the, the, the work make this uh, partnership work, and also uh, we do a, a little bit thing. I would pretty happy uh, what we do and what we don't. And oh, I also hope we next we can help next step and make the even environmental better. But uh, regarding resource, yeah, I mean uh, yeah, human resource or and, and and also financial resource, if it still continue. Yeah, we, we will still go, yeah. <laughs> okay, and thanks for all your uh, sharing and serve as the speakers. So let's give them a round of applause. And uh, also I would like to give my profound appreciation to all the participants. Thank you all for stopping by. And uh, if you'd like to engage more, you can find us outside the venue. And uh, or simply just contact Open Culture Foundation by email, yeah. And the session will be end here. Thank you. <laughs>